Good morning and hello everyone. I'm Nanami Fujisaki from Saitama University Faculty of Liberal Arts. And today I would like to analyze how Japanese national characters were generated from the perspective of Confucianism. This is the agenda for today. It is said that many of the Japanese people are uh, polite and kind to others. So then, why are Japanese people described in such a way? I think that by looking at Confucianism, we can find the reasons. First, I would like to explain what the Confucianism is. Confucianism was founded by Kunzu, also known as Confucius in the sixth century BC in ancient China. In brief, Confucianism teaches that in order to become a perfect person, a sage, people should practice the five teachings of Jin, Gi, Rei, Qi, and Xin. Jin is benevolence, which means being aware of one's own physical and mental needs and using them to consider the feelings of others. Gi is righteousness, which refers to being orderly and justice. Lei is humbleness. Qi is the ability to make moral judgments and Xin is being true to one's nature. Also, Chuko, a combination of loyalty to the master and filial piety to the parents, or Shushin, the growing personal morality through daily actions are referred in Confucius' words. Next, I will talk about the brief history of Confucianism in Japan. Confucianism was brought to Japan in the 6th century by the ancient migrants to Japan. Since then, it has been studied and interpreted by many different people. However, until the 16th century, Confucianism was a knowledge uh, monopolized by a few privileged classes and did not develop at the popular level. From the 17th to the 19th century, there were no major wars in Japan and academic studies spread to the people. In this context, Confucianism developed as a political philosophy that emphasized harmony and respect for the authorities. In the late of the 19th century, there was a major shifting of the social system. Specifically, the shogun who ruled Japan deposed and began to interact with the Western world more intensively. Also, ideas of freedom and rights as well as Western technology were introduced to Japan and old things and ways of thinking were no longer valued. However, Confucianism, the basis of Japanese thinking was not neglected, but rather used as an ideology to create a centralized country with the emperor at its core. Finally, I will describe the Japanese people today and Confucianism. In modern Japan, Confucianism has spread into the lives of Japanese people as social ethic. For example, Japanese people are very punctual and strict to the instruction, which is similar to the teachings of Gi regarding the observing rule. Furthermore, Reading between the lines is the very essence of Jin, consideration for others. However, the spirit of politeness and modesty are rarely practiced with the awareness that this is a Confucian teaching. For this reason, Confucianism is a way of thinking that is deeply rooted unconsciously, and it's one of one of the factors that make up the Japanese national character. Thank you very much for your attention.
And the next presenter is Tominaga-san. Please go on. Hello, I'm Kanako Tominaga, a senior student at Saitama University. I'd like to start my presentation following Nanami. So next slide, please. Confucianism is unknowingly rooted in us. Well, how do the Japanese themselves feel about their ethnicity today? I'd like to introduce two surveys mainly targeting modern youth. In a survey by the cabinet office in 2018, when, the, when asked if they could communicate their thought clearly to others, those who answered in the affirmative did not account for the entirety of the respondents with more negative opinions. Next, please. So this is the survey results. Negative opinion total 53.7%. Next, please. In a 2019 Nippon Foundation survey of 18-year-old attitudes, young people who answered yes to each of the question, each of the question, what do you think about yourself? Had the following results. Next, please. Please see the slides. Question, what do you think about yourself? A, I'm a member of a responsible society, 44.8%. B, I can change my country and society, 80.3%. C, I have a problem in my country that I want to solve, 46.4%. D, I actively discuss social issues, 27.2%. Next, please. Thank you. It looks like this when compared in the graph. Of the nine countries of Japan, India, Indonesia, South Korea, Vietnam, China, the United Kingdom, America, and Germany, Japan ranked last in all questions ahead of the other countries. Next, please. This introversion and passivity, passivity are one of the characteristics of the Japanese people. Modern Japanese are aware of their own introverted nature when compared to other countries. The historical background of this ethnicity is related to Confucianism, but the history of national isolation having only one language and being an isolated island nation are also example of factors. Furthermore, because of their three characteristics, the Japanese people have developed the perception that Japan is a single ethnic group, which is discussed domestically, but this is not, case, not the case. Next, please. There was trade with Netherlands and China, even during the isolation period. Over the years, they have been assimilated into a single language, but language differences also existed. There are remnants of modern dialects. Throughout history, ethnic groups have been assimilated in the same way, and a few have been eliminated. Originally, there were Ainu, Korean, and Ryukyu people. This has led to the perception that Japan is a single ethnic country, but Japan has always been a multi-ethnic country. Ainu are one of the peoples. So let's move on to the next presenter. Thank you. Uh, so I'll introduce uh, ethnic group of Japan, Ainu. Uh, I'm Hayato Kamishi, second grade of Saitama University. Let me introduce Ainu. So, what is Ainu? Uh, the northern island of Japan, called Hokkaido, was massed in Japanese government in the 19th, and there were a native people called Ainu. Uh, they have specific language and culture. It is different from Japanese. 
Japanese are agricultural people for a long time. On the other hand, Aino people is hunter gatherer. They traded fur, feather, and seafood in Japan. Aino people is also connected to Far East Russia. Their characteristic culture can be seen in their folk faith. There are bears living in Hokkaido land, and sometimes bears damage Ainu people. So Ainu people feared and worshipped bears. It can be seen in Kumaokuri festival, as you can see the picture. Ainu people have discriminated by Japanese for a long time. Their rights are oppressed by law in the past. Ainu had lived in difficulty and poverty. Although they have argued their equality, they spoke Congress in Ainu language that their own culture and human rights must be saved. Finally, law was absoluted and Ainu was accepted as Aborigines. What we can think of multicultural? In the ancient times, Japanese and Ainu were interacted peacefully. What changed in later period is that Japanese required more resources and obligation to Ainu. Since then, Ainu people had been oppressed for 400 years. It is because Japan got more power and development than Ainu. So how could they keep the friendship? How can we make equal relationships among two nations? The answer is not to require only profits and respect each other's culture. That is the way of multicultural world. Uh, presentation is over. Thank you.